Black Ice is the title of both ACDC's latest album and the band's first full-length tour since 2001. With creative director Patrick Woodruff at the helms of all things visual, the Black Ice touring set was designed by Jeremy Lloyd and Mark Fisher from Stewfish. As well as ACDC's iconic cannons and Hell's Bell, the tour is notable for a life-size runaway train built by brilliant stages with support from stage construction firm Tate Towers. The set also features a huge inflatable lady named Rosie, created by regular stewfish supplier Air Artists. Upstaging is making its ACDC debut as lighting vendor, working with Patrick Woodruff, co-designer Dave Hill, and lighting director Charlie Wilson, otherwise known as Cosmo. Meanwhile, Screenworks is handling Video World. All this is being supervised by production manager Opie, who also brought in Claire Brothers to look after the live sound. With John Lewis taking over from Mike Adams on monitors for the European tour, the front of house mix is left to Pat Boothroyd, now a veteran of three ACDC World Tours, who is relying on the X-Array sound system from Electro Voice as his main PA element. Why X-Array? Because we used it last time, we liked what we got out of it last time, the band liked it, they liked the look of a big PA. It gives me a lot of baffle area. Line arrays are great, but I don't think the line array really suits ACDC. We have played through line arrays and they sounded fine. But at the end of the day, I don't think they wanted the pencil PA look. ACDC are known for their sound, yeah, yeah. being a big sound bank. So big PA, it's all part of the, of the whole big picture. But uh, it actually does sound good. I've got, I've got a phenomenal system engineer, Dave Dixon. He's worked with me on ACDC many a times and other projects. And, I think between the two of us, we, you know, we get the best out of it. We do have some linery on the very outside. It's the Clear i4, or the i5 actually now. We can fly that high up and bend it to, to just shoot right up the sides. Joining Pab at front of house are two Midas consoles from two very different eras. A Pro 40 analog desk, built in 1985 and used on the tour for the main front of house mix. And the very latest from Midas, the Digital Pro 6, which is used to record ACDC shows as well as mixed support bands. Both consoles share modular design approaches, but it's the older Pro 40 that is providing the comfort zone for PAB. This is like an old, an old pair of slippers, you put them back on and you think, oh, I'll just try them on, and you go, ah, that's better. It's always good using analog stuff. A lot of people nowadays, they grow up on PM1Ds and all sorts of things, you know, and they, they would never even ever had to use a console like this. It makes me wonder, you know. For me, though, it really is just like an old friend. It's actually a very simple desk. It's not complicated. I think every, everybody should use an analog desk of some kind, or certainly something where you, you're twiddling real pots and moving faders and plunking proper switches. The Pro 6 represents PAB's first move into Midas's new digital environment. And during ACDC's two rehearsals in the States, Midas's Richard Faraday, aka Fez, went over to help smooth out the process. When we first got the Pro 6 over to America where we were doing rehearsals, Fez came over and kind of babysat that. We, we, we dialed it up and I had a listen between the two. When you, the thing is with a digital desk, when you listen to it on an individual basis, if you put a, if you put a microphone into, into a, mono, a single channel and you go hello one two two and then you do the same on a, an analog desk, you go hello one two, there is actually not a great deal of difference. I think the real difference comes is when you sum a lot of inputs together and it's the final master bus out where you hear, you know, obviously a lot of small additions make up to a big change. But with the Pro 6, though that wasn't as noticeable. I, I think what they they maintain that classic Midas sound uh, uh, that, that comes out the, the the main bus. It's it's very smooth. That the high frequencies are notably more precise, more real, more authentic. 
I don't know whether that's because of a 96k sampling, and, and I know bit rate and all that makes the biggest difference, I suppose. But it's, there's something about this which is um, it, it does have a nice minor sound to it. I like the size of this now. It's it's uh, I never did it. I never have used an XL8 mainly because I've never had a, a reason to. But when this came out to America and we started messing with it and comparing it, it just slotted into place nicely. Mm. It's great to use. I'm not using it on anger on this tour as such as a main console, but we've been using it for all the opening acts. Uh, I've been recording off it. I do set it up as an emergency console so I can actually unmute the masters and go straight into a, a mix which we have dialed in. And occasionally every now and then I check that mix, you know, I just I run a, yeah. a song or two through it and I listen to it and I'd be hard to tell the difference if my eyes were closed in the, in the heat of a moment or whatever. You'd never, you, you wouldn't really know. It's, mm. Of course it, it, it does sound different but it's it's not massively, which is pleasing, you know, it's great. It means that the, the development is ongoing and it's getting there.